Good day, YouTubers, and welcome to the vlog. So today is our first day of putting a vlog up from yesterday. That's kind of weird. And uh, so right now I'm, I finished editing it and didn't take much time, which is great. And it's time to have to compress it, but I have a bank appointment. So I did get up at seven o'clock, did the garbage, got all that all out and ready, got my coffee ready, moved some files off my card that from last night when we went rock climbing and uh, stuff. So I had to compress that for Final Cut Pro. And now it's all done. I just have to, this timing is of the essence right now. Uh, basically I have to leave in five, 10, 15 minutes, maybe 20. I'm hoping that the compressor finishes compressing it as soon as possible, cause we gotta go. And uh, yeah, and then we have to have the bank meeting. I have to do a video at Harvey's with your choices of burgers, hopefully. And then I have to pick up Megan on the way back up here. And uh, yeah, so full day ahead, fasten your seatbelt. Well, I kind of thought I'd locked out because my business bank person uh, phoned and said that they were stuck in traffic and so they're gonna be half an hour late just at the time where I almost left the house not finishing uploading the YouTube video for you guys today. And uh, so I'm like, oh great, so I got an extra half hour because she's probably gonna be a half an hour late. So it, the video finished compressing, started uploading it, got the thumbnail done, and I left a few minutes extra early, and now I am stuck in traffic. This is going through Bradford. This is pretty rare to have uh, traffic like this going out of Bradford. I have no idea where the accident is. I've been listening to the news and they said there was a house fire, but I'm not sure if it was here. Uh, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen. If I should just like get out of here or not. Oh well. All right guys, I am here at Harvey's and uh, I'm gonna be doing actually three burgers. I'm gonna do the uh, two original burgers for six bucks and I think I'm gonna do um, the Angus burger and, and deal, make it a deal. I I'm hoping I can do a deal on the Angus burger. If not, I'll just have to buy an Angus burger and a drink or something. So I'm gonna do three burgers uh, because three people had really interesting toppings that I've never attempted to try on a burger before. So I'm not gonna tell you on this vlog, I want you guys to uh, find out when you watch the video whose toppings choices I used. So you'll have to see that on the video. But everybody who did mention what they wanted on their burgers, I'm definitely gonna have them in the video somewhere, whether at the end or throughout the video or something. I'm gonna to have to put up your names for participating with me. So I'm just gonna set up all my stuff, go in and get my food, come on and do the review, and then we'll be done. So uh, hang on. So I just finished up the uh, Harvey's. I'm absolutely full because I ate three hamburgers. It's not the most food I've ever eaten, as you guys know. Anyway, so the lights are still on. I shut off those already. So these ones I have to press hold. And it shuts off eventually. It's not like an off on button because it's a multi-use button. But eventually it shuts off, which is good. So I have to go pick up Megan and then I'm dropping her off at a food fair. I can't remember exactly where it is. If it's up in Barrie, then we're gonna go do the food bank while she's doing that. Alrighty, let's go. Well, I picked Megan up and we started going up to the job fair and it turns out she doesn't need to go there until 2.30, so, so now we're driving back home. Uh, and I thought I'd check my mailbox. Let's do it. I need my keys. I left them in the car. I've got the keys now. This will make it easier to get out of my mailbox. Whatever it is. Nice. Liverpool, New York. It's from Luke. Nice. Thanks, Luke. I'll have to figure out what's inside as soon as we get in the car. As you can see, we're back home. Again, Luke, thank you very much for the letter. That was awesome. Uh, very nice penmanship, sir. Awesome. Thanks, Luke. 
I did read the whole thing and uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to write that to me. That was awesome. Thanks, buddy. And we're back! <laughs> so, uh, let's see, it was uh, Swizzus, I believe, and Hayes Hacker 1, and you both uh, confirmed the uh, the guy from the sources information which was the whole fat 32 system which is what is on this drive when you first buy it and it is originally put on there so that you can use it on any platform and uh, he just said let me just click on the read more button just in case you want to know something a little bit more interesting so it's it's designed for Windows Linux and Mac and uh, it limits its file size to four gig. So what you have to do, like the guy said, you have to go and reformat it. So I had to take all the information off, which I think was 150 gig worth of data, take it off there, it took three hours to do that, and then reformat the drive to uh, Mac OS uh, with journaled, which is in whatever you call them, brackets. And, uh, and then move all the stuff back, which took, which took another three hours. So as we speak now, everything's good to go. I can drop on big files if I want, which is where I want it to be. Thank you very much. This is what I love about YouTube. I put a question out there and you guys just are rocking the answers. And uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I almost went out and spent an extra, or spent money that I didn't need to spend on a hard drive, although, if I did get that other hard drive that I was talking about, it's Firewire 800, I could actually edit off of it, I believe. All right, so that was one of the main reasons too that I was thinking, you know, maybe sell this one, use some of that money to buy the Western Digital My Passport with the Firewire 800. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. No, we still got more time. It's like four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, talked about the letter, talked about that. Um, Oh, and then Tina said, uh, so you were drinking and driving home? Certainly hope not. So in the laws of Canada, uh, at least Ontario, uh, I can, being a 48 year old, 215, 219 pound man, I could drink three beers in two hours and I am still well underneath the legal limit to drink a couple beers and then go driving. So just to give you a heads up, I was legal because I only had three beers in the time that I was at Paul's house to the time I left, which is totally acceptable. All right, let's move on. All right, guys, as promised yesterday, I was gonna show you how I set up my camera system for when I do a shoot for a theater and stuff like that. Uh, this is my camera bag and I showed you the camera yesterday. This is my uh, Pelican case that I have all my extras in. So I have my receiver microphone. I have my transmitter microphone. You can see that in there. I'll open it for you. There you go. It's a really nice Sony and a mic. I use that sometimes. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll tape that to the front of the stage so you hear all the, the tap dancing routines that are going on. It's, sometimes it's good to hear their feet. It's important. Uh, and then I have like a little tool kit and it's got screwdrivers and all the different kinds of adapters and stuff. Very, very important. And this is my monitor in which I use on top of the camera. So let's start putting this together. Are you ready? Just wanna make sure we're aimed at the right spot. Get a little bit closer to you because wide angle lens doesn't help at all. Okay. <laughs> So, we got the big camera. We got our, very important when you're setting up a camera like this, this is called uh, a ball head and you can balance it. There's a level right on top of there. So it's very important that you level your tripod before you get into doing all the work, before you put all the weight on there. Sometimes you have to level it again after you do it all, but it's kind of good to start off with it leveled. So I do that. This is a plate that you have to buy for this style of camera. And it just slides into two grooves, snap it on, give it a little jiggle, make sure it's not gonna fall anywhere. And as you can see, it's not balanced. It's 
balance went straight up and down at the moment, which is good. This is a light. And I usually just keep it in this. I have elastics on there because the actual rubber band uh, or elastic that was inside this um, diffuser uh, broke. And so now I just have use rubber bands and, and uh, paper clips to hold it on properly. So that goes on the top. That just screws on. This is what I'm doing behind the scenes stuff and shooting. I don't use this from the back of the theater. So I'll, I would keep this off in this situation. Uh, number two. So I have batteries. And it has little indicators on the side. So this one is dead and this one is almost dead. So we can throw that on the back. That also helps. This is why you might want to balance it at the end. Start balanced, start it balanced, and then, or sorry, this will always be level. Balancing is when you slide the camera back and forth on top of here through uh, one, this little lever here. So I apologize. So originally you have to level it, and then from there you balance it by sliding the camera back and forth, depending on how much gear you put on it. Uh, I think we're gonna have to, no, that's good. So the next I would put on it, is my monitor and you just screw it on bottom and it has a shoe mount hot shoe mount and I put that on the top and it is loose you gotta be careful with your gear loosen it up make sure it's in the right spot and there's my monitor. So when I'm shooting, I can see what's going on. Uh, you can see through here, but it, you don't want to do that for three hours. It fries out your, your neck because you're straining to feel it. Uh, the other thing I'd have to do is plug in wires that go into the side. We have power. Power for the monitor separate. Then I have cabling. This goes into the monitor, like so. And then all I'm using is uh, video. So the video out will come through there, it goes into my video, sorry, video out to my video in. And that's pretty much it. So as you can see, it's starting to tip. So I might want to lock that. Uh, not lock that lock this one this is my tilt lock and then I can extend these arms I'm just trying to remember where I put my um, my lever where do I usually put that hmm oh right in my backpack I'll be right back and we're back I forgot to bring out let me just tip that up just a bit more this is my uh, camera backpack and it has some more essentials in it like a um, an extension cord because you never know where you're going to be at the back of a theater and you never know where the power is going to be sometimes and make sure you have many outputs on it or inputs. So this is a zoom control. The zoom control, very, very useful piece of equipment. So you loosen it up. It has like a zoom in, zoom out, and uh, start and stop, start recording, stop recording button. So you put this like that. You put that on the arm of your tripod. You can adjust the length of your tripod. You can adjust how wide out the arm goes up like that. So I usually go out a little bit, depending on, sometimes you're this far away from the camera. Sometimes you're like right up to it. So you want this to be maybe a little bit closer. And then sometimes you're far away. So you want them to be farther out like a motorcycle. This plugs into the underneath of your lens. There's only a, there's a slot, a special 
series of pins that have to go in a certain way, but you can't really mess it up because there's a guide to do that. So at this point in time, if I was setting up to actually do a shoot right now, um, turn the camera on, let it warm up for like an hour before you start shooting. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much ready to go. One of the things I like doing too is putting this kind of barn door on my monitor so that the light coming from that doesn't disturb people around you. So there you go. This is pretty much what I did for quite a few years and I'm still doing it. I would love to move into full on HD, but I just can't afford to do that right now. And the clients that I have don't seem to mind it still being uh, DV quality video. So that's that. Um, I don't think there's anything else I want to make sure if I'm going to be uh, doing a performance where I definitely needed to have audio close to the to the uh, stage, then I just throw my mon my uh, receiver on, plug it into mic line one. That's a line one, line two. My line two will be designated just for that, so I can pick up. Um, audience participation clapping and so forth and then just make sure that this is you're getting good audio levels on your meters always wear headphones make sure you're getting all your audio properly and uh, yeah that's pretty much it guys that's what I'm gonna be doing Saturday and I'll show you again on Saturday when I'm all set up all right see you soon all right guys that's all I have for you tonight uh, we had pierogies for dinner chicken um, we had uh, my favorite salad, which is uh, spinach. Spinach leaf is my favorite leaf salad, to base of a salad. And then we threw in uh, red onions and um, red, what's it called, uh, cabbage. And then I put a little bit of, um, I try to put as little amount of dressing on it as possible and I put on the ranch uh, dressing. Dressing is my favorite. Excuse me while I scratch my nose because it was itchy. So uh, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog and we will see you tomorrow. See ya.